Welcome back to Get Carver Paddling. Today, we're in Green Lake, Seattle at the Ted Hawk Regatta. Yesterday, we started off Saturday with racing 1,000 meters. And we had boys, girls, we had K2s, K4s, and singles. We had canoes and kayaks. And then today, we raced 500 meters. And as you can see behind me, they're still racing. We're finishing up today with that. Uh, we have 230 paddlers here this year, some from Canada. There's a few different clubs, I think three or four. And then about seven to 10 from the states, all the way down from uh, Sacramento area, San Diego. We got people from Oklahoma. We got Hawaiians here, uh, three different teams from Washington and there's so many fun community things but this is probably one of the best and so we're happy to be here and the kids are doing great. Thanks Coach Allison, this is Bob Platt. And this is Coach Sadie. And we are at Ted Houck Regatta. We're gonna give you a little commentary on the race. We've got a lot of teams here this year and uh, is this usual Coach Sadie? Oh yeah, this is always a big regatta. It's probably only second to nationals. In fact, it's so big, we have our first sponsor. Our first sponsor of the race is Crew Cup Coffee Roasters. They did a great job providing coffee for the paddlers, mostly the parents, and uh, we'd like to give them a big shout out. Thanks for sponsoring this video. And back to the race, last on Saturday, yes, uh, the first day of the race, we had a thousand meter races, and uh, there were. Uh, it was kind of a rainy, cold day, wasn't it? It was a rainy cold day. We had some kids with a kaika from Hawaii stay with us and they were shivering their toes off. So we're gonna focus on the 500 meter races. We've got the Women's Open C2 race here. What does open mean? Open just means it's open to all age categories. So oftentimes you'll see the older paddlers compete in the open. Um, there's not a lot of older paddlers, so master seniors. So what they do is they create the open to create more competition within those ages. Yeah, it looks like the C2 out in front there. Uh, do you know which team that is? I believe that's a mix, but it's from Seattle. That's going to be Azusa and Andy. Okay, that's, yeah, Seattle and then False Creek. They're from Canada, aren't they? Yes. And it looks like uh, Gig Harbor came in third there. Absolutely. Uh, women's Bantam K2. What's the Bantam age? Bantam is the lowest age range in the United States that we race. It is U14. So anyone under 14 is going to be considered a Bantam in the United States. So th those are the young ones, the young kids, right? Yes. Yeah, that's pretty impressive. There's a, quite a lead there on the for between second and third and then how does it work with the looks like second and third has a mixed boat tell us how that works yeah mixed boats are kind of complicated as a coach we put in mixed boats usually when we have a kid that doesn't have a partner or is left out of a team boat and there's some strategy within what boats you put with what kids so how does that work with the there's two a k2 and a k4 in the same race what was going on there that's an exhibition race. So what they do is they put K4s with K2s um, because that K2 doesn't really have any competition with other K2s. Mm. Um, that K2 will not make any points for their team, but it gives them a chance to get that race experience. Ah, the race experience. Now, it looks like we have a C1, and this paddler I know is from our team, Gig Harbor. Why is he by himself there? What's going on there? Yes, that is Thomas' son. He is a Bantam canoe boy, and he is a top Bantam canoe boy. So frankly, he's just too fast. Um, and so he's out in front. There's a good six or seven paddlers behind him. That does happen occasionally. And uh, yeah, oh, this is a good looking race. Who's coming in here first and second? Looks like they're coming. Oh, that's a tight one. That's, uh, is that Seattle, it looks like? Maybe Falls Creek? Be Bellingham. Bellingham, like. yes. They are really good with kayaks. Absolutely. Falls Creek and then Kamloops. I believe they're from Canada as well. Yes, both Falls Creek and Kamloops are great uh, teams from Canada. And they provide some of the biggest competition for us. And this is the master's group, which is pretty much any age over what, 23 or 18? I don't know or, that answer. <laughs> yeah. it's, the, it's the older group. Uh, they do, they train here at Gig Harbor, um, a lot of them, and they do really good. Uh, it's Mike Peterson, I think is the guy. Yeah, Mike Peterson is our top uh, master's athlete and he crushes his races. And then look at that, we've got a mixed couple, wow, big mixed group on that second boat is every team it looks like. <laughs> got San Diego, Seattle, got a little bit of everybody. Uh, junior K1 here, uh, we've got, so Junior, what age group is Junior? Junior is kind of that middle age group. Um, that group would be U18, so 16 to 18 year olds are going to be racing as Juniors. 
Okay, and then Cascade, they're very strong in kayak. Mm -hmm. uh, Gig Harbor, and then what's WRCC? I don't know who those guys are. Do you? Uh, that's a Canadian team. Canadian I team. Okay, it was great to have those those guys. They're really good. Canada has a real strong uh, paddling team of people mm -hmm. that that do that. I, I, we need to really pick their brains and figure out what they're doing up there. Absolutely. The thing with this sport is not a lot of people are engaged in the sport in the United States. So a majority of some of our competition is coming from Canada. In fact, last year we actually lost this race to Canadians That's right. and it was very good for us to be able to lose to a team and learn from that because unfortunately we just don't have the competition in the States. Yeah, I mean there's some great individual paddlers on other teams but our team does kind of dominate from year to year and uh, it's, it was really good to have Canada in here uh, to kind of keep us humble. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, and hopefully we'll, we'll win uh, the point system. How, tell us how the point system works with the races. Yeah, so the point system works um, for the first seven places after you finish, and it goes down. So first place would get seven points, and then uh, down. So sixth place would get less, fifth, oh. seventh place would get less. And if you get eighth or ninth, you don't get anything. Um, in the heats, you have to compete to make the final, um, but heats do not count towards overall points. So you could win a heat and then lose a final, and you would get no points. Okay, that makes sense and some of these had a lot of heats didn't they absolutely um, bantam boy kayakers often have the most heats out of anyone at nationals last year I believe we had 40 bantam kayakers which was I believe a record for our nationals wow. um, which may not be a lot to some other people but for this sport it's pretty pretty amazing in women's canoe you'll often see no heats so it's really cool for our women paddlers to be able to get the chance to come. That one was close. Look at that. One, two, three right there. That was pretty good. Who mm -hmm. was it? That looks like the Bantam, no, Juvie, sorry. Uh, Men's C1. Yep. We have there a lot of our athletes fighting for the uh, for a podium finish. And Carter Caboot Carter. just came in at third. Yeah, Carter. That's how you know that they're they're strong because Carter's like our best uh, canoeer at that. Yeah, at and that he has category. no competition nationally at right. the moment. And they, they beat him. And that looked like uh, K4, those are fun. The K4 boats are really fun. They go super fast. Uh, and it looked like uh, we got first, we, oh, we split a boat with uh, mm -hmm. Belling Bellingham. Bellingham produces some really good kayakers. Uh, this is women's juvenile K4. Uh, so I think we have a boat in here, don't we? Uh, possibly a slower boat. I don't believe we, we got on the podium with this one. Yeah. But this r race was great. We have a lot of newer uh, kayak women in these races that we're trying to build up. And so it was really great watching them race for some of the first times since they've been on the team. Yeah, so it looks like Akaika is coming in third there. Uh, looks like we split a boat in first place, which we is great. Did. Uh, Masters K2. Oh, we have this one's interesting. If you look to the left side, I, I seem to remember this. Watch the left side of your screen there. Boom. Boat went down. So, what happens in that case, Coach Sadie? Uh, they get down? disqualified. Unfortunately, if you fall in a race, you get disqualified. Even if you get in the boat on your own, it is still a disqualification. At these bigger races, um, they, they will just DQ you. At the smaller races, you'll see some kids get back in their boats and be able to keep going. Yeah, so this is the C1. Uh, I believe this is Bantam C1 Women's, if I had to guess. Well, no, nope, nope, that's not it, because that's Stella, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, that's Stella, so this is going to be Junior, right, or Juvie? Junior, yeah. Junior. Junior, sorry. So, yeah, Stella came in second to False Creek. Again, another strong Canadian finish. Mm -hmm. Men's Bantam K1. Uh, we happen to have a fantastic Bantam K1, don't we, uh, in... Waters, Ben Waters. Yes, Ben Waters is probably our top bantam boy at the moment, and it's been really fun watching him race. He has a very cool, composed nature, uh, which is pretty crushing when you get beat by him. Yeah, <laughs> he's very connected. I, I'm learning a lot about the paddle, the stroke, but uh, he looks like he belongs in a kayak. Followed right by those Cascade boys. Um, we have a strong bantam kayak boy base, but man, Cascade has some of the best kayak boys, particularly in the 500 and thousand. Yeah, uh, yeah. Cascade when they paddle on that river they do I think it makes them strong <laughs> oh yeah I couldn't do it I yeah. couldn't do it yeah so and here we go we have another uh, k1 event uh, coming across in first place is Cascade of course and then Kamloops so mm -hmm. you can see that Canadian presence again how many teams came from Canada this year do you know oh I'm not sure I think minimum four or five yeah um, they have a lot of paddlers and what you'll notice in these races is that as far as canoe goes we really don't see any other competition mm -hmm. in the states outside of Gate Harbor we see some San Diego, San Diego. Um, yeah. we saw a couple of Seattle but really 
when we're watching these canoe races like we are right now, you're gonna see that the biggest competition is gonna be from our team in uh, Falls Creek, with the exception of these paddlers right here from San Diego. Yeah. Um, they're just starting to build a very, really awesome group of girls who are, are super sweet, and um, they've been giving us a good fight for our money. So you'll see in first and third, we have those San Diego girls um, providing lots of competition for our girls. Yeah, well, we weren't able to film all the events, but we were glad that uh, you could watch this, and we had some great sponsors. Uh, Nello was at the race, and Prestel, they were at the race, kind of, and we had a lot of people volunteering their time. Mm -hmm. uh, it takes a lot of people to make one of these events go smoothly, and uh, we appreciate you watching. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the bell. We are glad to put these uh, videos together for you.